Team Pete up, on your marks, get set, go. And that means Z, by the way. <laughs> oh, uh, okay. Um, <laughs> um, well, when I was asked which team I wanted to be on, I was under the assumption that we're using team to mean I ship this person with Katniss. People think that it means favorite character, then that's not what I mean by Team Peta, because I love and that's not what we mean by by okay. Team Pete or Team Gil either. Yeah, we're we're specifically referring to Katniss's romantic relationships. Okay, um, then I will start off the defense of Katniss and Peta as being the Katniss OTP, in that the two symbols that um, sort of represent them throughout the rebellion and throughout all three of the books, bread and fire actually go into making the actual District 12 marriage ceremony, which is the toasting and holding a slice of bread over the fire. So the two of them together being represented by the thing that actually creates marriage and the two of them being those representations coming together and creating the rebellion kind of shows me, in my opinion, and I'm not articulating it well, that their fate as a pair throughout the books is the same as that of Panem. If the Rebellion wins, then they end up together. If the Rebellion falters, then they wouldn't. And the Rebellion ended up being successful, so so did they. All right, let's get some more views. PETA, speak up. Let's hear, why should Katniss be with PETA? Hi, this is Sheila. Um, I think that Katniss should be with PETA because... You know, they've had this kind of a history that started out when they were kids. Katniss was, you know, going through this really uh, difficult time when she was starving, and PETA reached out to her and, you know, put himself kind of in harm's way in order to get her bread, and that gave her hope. And I think at the end of the day, she really probably would have ended up with Gail had she not gone into the Hunger Games, and that was really a life-altering sort of event for her. And the um, experience that she had going into this Hunger Games and then having this prior history with PETA really changed their relationship and changed the dynamics, um, not only of, you know, their relationship, but who Katniss is as a person. And I don't know that after all the things that she's experienced with PETA and the Hunger Games, she would have ever been able to go back and been the same girl that Gail knew. This is Kim. Yeah. Sheila, I have to completely agree with you about uh, the whole life-altering thing. Being in Hunger, Hunger Games and having to witness uh, people dying all around you and then having to also murder people in order for your own survival is a completely life-altering thing. It changes everything you've ever known about life. And so the only person that could ever really relate to having to go through that with her would be PETA. And so, you know, when you're going through a rough period of time, and she's dealing with, you know, everything, the withdrawal, everything. It's like there, who who else can she talk to to bring comfort and solace and help her become almost whole again? Because, um, I mean, I guess in the end of, of Mockingjay, we kind of see she's, like, you know, a product of war now. She's seen the devastation and the lows that human society can get to, and who else can appreciate love and happiness and friendship better with her than PETA, who's also seen the worst of the worst. And they got each other through it. I think that was really kind of the key um, for me, you know, is that they became each other's primary supports, whether Katniss was, was you know, consciously aware of it or not. Um, she leaned on PETA heavily, and she really relied on him to kind of get her through that time. Oh, definitely. Well, see, that's definitely. Why I, I definitely love, agree um, with that. That's why I love PETA so much because it's Ariana from down with the Capitol. Is even like everything that he went through, he still kind of remained the same. Like even at the end, I don't want to give away spoilers or anything for Mockingjay, but there's something that he did <laughs> involving Prim, and it kind of it kind of just reminded everybody that he is still the same guy. And even though they've gone through so much, they could still have you know be somewhat normal and stuff. This is me. I both agree and disagree. I think that neither of them is at all the same person that they were at the end of Mockingjay that they are at the beginning of the Hunger Games, but they changed in equally opposite ways. I think that, that PETA lost a lot of his um, sort of illusions of the, the natural privilege of being a merchant that he'd had, and Katniss gained 
so much emotional understanding of herself and empathy for other people over the course of the series that, I mean, she really didn't have in even the end of the, the first book of the, the trilogy. I always think that she got kind of an F in emotions in the first book. And then it really in Catching Fire and Mockingjay, she and Peta both grew so much together and separately that I think that's what made them successful in the ending in the epilogue. Spoiler, retroactively. <laughs> This is Gabby Kim again. Um, another thing that oh, I yeah. thought let's, of. Let's, 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 oh yeah, make your point, and then and then we want to make sure Gabby gets a chance to speak. But go ahead. Sorry, no, go ahead. Gabby can go. Gabby can go. Sorry. No, oh, that's alright. Go ahead. No, that's okay. <laughs> I think the other really cool thing about Pete and Katniss is like Pete is a very naked character, and what I mean by that is he kind of, you know, wears his heart on his sleeve. He shows you that he cares about you, you know, all that kind of stuff. Whereas. Katniss is kind of more nervous about showing emotion, I think, because of what she saw her mom go through with, uh, you know, her dad. And so I think that Peta brings a more human side out of her and a more emotional side that, you know, shows her it's okay to love. I mean, the only time you really see Katniss show, like, this extreme emotion is, is for her sister when she takes her place. So I think Peta's a good uh, influence on her to be that it's okay to be emotional and it's okay to experience, you know, love. Great. And Stacey here, oh, I was just going to say, um, yeah, that's ahead. the thing about Gail, that the reason why she's not, Gail's not the, they're too much alike. There's too much passion and fire, not enough um, heart and soul. And um, Gail is just too much like Katniss and Peta is what she needs. They're the opposites, and they're like the yin and the yang, and they just fit perfectly together. Okay, great. Um, this is Gabby. <laughs> I yeah, was just going to say the same thing. Sorry, <laughs> you waited out there. <laughs> yeah, I, I was just going to. I was just going to say along those same lines that uh, Peta and Katniss complement each other. And like uh, whoever just spoke said that Gail and Katniss are just too much alike, and if there was never a Hunger Games, and maybe she would have never gotten close to Peter at all since they never really spoke before, is that maybe she would have ended up with Gal, but there wouldn't have been anything, like, worth fighting for. They just, they're just so similar. It's almost like marrying your cousin or, like, your best friend, but no spark, no excitement. So I, as horrible as the Hunger Games was, in some odd, strange way, she found someone who she's perfect with through the horror. So. Uh, no, great, great point. And I, I think that was a, a pretty solid, strong concluding line. Gabby held off talking for a while, but then comes in and really has a zinger there. Um, does anybody else want to say something quickly before we turn it over to the Gales and get their opinion? Any last words from the Pitas? Yeah, I don't think we heard from Ariana at all. Me? A, a, oh, little, I a little, a little. But I do, so I do want to mention one. though that Peta really is the dandelion in the spring. <laughs> 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 That's all. I think it's safe to say our our teen Petas are a little bit more of the, you know, as you said, the dandelions, romantic, uh, you know, more into the guy who bakes. Let's face it, than <laughs> the guy who can kill animals. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't like so. a man that can kill people with his bare hands. So everybody always gives Gail all this credit for shooting squirrels, but Peta snapped a girl's neck. So really, there you go. <laughs> and it's not like Peta is a wimp. I mean, he did, you know, kind of survive like the worst ordeal ever, being in the Hunger Games. Let's be fair here. <laughs> so, yeah, Peta is an incredibly <laughs> strong character, and I will never understand why people you know, call him a pansy and, and, and act like he's a weak person, yeah. you know, when he's at well, when he's absolutely well, maybe not. We'll hear that from some of these some of these gales might say that. Uh and <laughs> I'm very curious to see if that's one of their arguments.